Hello YouTubes, this is Grimweird coming back at you with more Enigmatica 2 Expert Mod Pack playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. Um, so last time we set up a, a mechanism induction matrix, which was my first experience with such a beast. It took a ton of uh, osmium, iron, and gold, and redstone, but we got this bad boy up and running. Um, we currently have uh, some of our power feeding into it. This is from the uh, windmills up top and from the th immersive engineering um, thermoelectric generators. And we're getting about a thousand RF per tick in there. Uh, we are now up to 34 million stored in our induction matrix out of a capacity of 3.2. Um, oops, that's. 34 million out of 3.2 billion RF. So we're slowly feeding some of that in um, and we're doing that sort of wirelessly by linking power cells from our power generators to the power storage. We are also putting a decent amount of RF into this energy cell um, just from sitting next to the plutonium RTG made with the fuel we stole from a dragon. And you can see here that this power cell is taking power from our tiny little uh, uh, five thermoelectric generator plant that we have installed in the ceiling with blocks of uranium and packed ice forming a thermal gradient around those. And if we run upstairs, uh, we also have some new wind generators and these are all still working the generators are being drained and the controller is not because we made the controller uh, a higher priority for receiving power than the power cell um, so the power cell is, cell is still stucking up um, all the rest of the stuff and it is um, sending it down to our induction matrix so we've got a decent amount of little, uh, of, you know, just some, uh, early, I would say early to beginning of mid game power generation and storage going. Um, that's probably going to do us for my next step, which I think is going to be, um, a digital miner. So I'm really uh, looking forward to a way to uh, get some automated mining going. And I think we can make one of these. I've got a robot. I got an advanced computer as a loot reward. I can make most of this stuff, although, you know, it's going to take up some time and some energy to make it, but I can do it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a digital miner this episode. And I'll do most of that off camera because you guys don't want to watch that. And then we'll try and set it up and get some mining going for the end of the episode. So that's the plan. And uh, once I start banging through this recipe, making all these subcomponents and uh, collecting any resources I'm missing, once I get towards the end of this, uh, we will be back and we'll see what we can do with it. I'll also need to make another power cell so that we can, if we set the digital miner off, in the distance, we'll use a power cell to hook it into our network and see if we can do things that way. All right, so I'll be back shortly with uh, some crafting done, hopefully. Taking a brief pause in the crafting action. When I was looking around in my chest for components, I realized that I uh, had a spare reinforcement um, mod that I was waiting to put on my obstacle glass when it leveled and that I was very close to leveling. So so I came down to uh, shoot lasers at my uh, monster spawners for a bit. There's a guy outside too. Um, so yeah. Now I can upgrade my laser and make it even harder to break. Um, 
it's going to be unbreakable before I ever have to repair it, which is nice because uh, it is uh, repaired with Osgo glass. And uh, I didn't want to spend Osgo glass on just repairs. But uh, I think the way I'm leveling it, it's probably going to probably gonna get all five of the reinforcements on to make it unbreakable before I need to ever repair it. So that is good. Um, and now that I have leveled that up, I will shoot a few more. For those of you that may not have seen me use the laser gun before, um, this Here's the guy outside. Um, so this has got uh, refined glowstone la laser medium, which gives it Illuminati. And Illuminati is what is uh, uh, outlining them in a white outline. Um, and the laser gun can shoot through walls. So the combination of Illuminati and a laser gun allows you to see them and shoot them through walls and ceilings and whatnot if they are close enough. Uh, the distance on that is not huge. Um, I would guess probably in the 8 to 16 block range, eh, probably 16 block range. Um, but if they get pretty close to you, you can see them outlined and you can shoot them right through walls. Anyway, loving the laser gun and uh, I will get back to crafting now that I have uh, leveled it up. All right, after a brief interlude of pew 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 against lasers, we are back to crafting and I have run into a slight problem in that one of the things I need for the digital miner, I had forgotten that this is why I keep putting this off, is this ultimate control circuit. And the ultimate control circuit requires some sort of complex new machinery, um, either combination crafting from extended crafting, which I don't really know anything about, um, I'm not 100% sure I can actually make this stuff. Um, I don't have Iridium. So, yeah. I'm thinking that's probably out. Um, so if I can't do the combination crafting, fusion crafting through Draconic Evolution, yeah, I don't have this stuff, so that's not going to fly. Um, so that leaves the Empowerer. Now the Empowerer I can make. Um, if I take a look at it, um, this is stuff that I can do. This is all Atomic, or this is all uh, actually addition stuff. Um, I can make a lot of these components with the um, Atomic Reconstructor. So I think I can do all of this stuff. Um, the thing that has been slowing me down from making an Empowerer was just powering the Empowerer. So you end up setting this bad boy up with a uh, the Empowerer thing in the middle, is in the middle, and then you set up like four display stands around it. Um, and then you have to power all four display stands. And I think making uh, some of this, these recipes cost millions of RF, so I didn't really feel like I had a good way to power. Um, I'm not going to use like MV, immersive engineering stuff at 4,000 a tick to try and power like four display stands at once. But um, before I realized that I needed that, I did make another power cell from RF tools, so I can steal this energy cell and that power cell, and I've got a power cell in my inventory and I can take the power cell from upstairs and I can set those at the four display stands that will still leave a power cell um, upstairs on our induction matrix to feed the other three power cells um, I've got now 71 million there and I've got uh, 100 and some million here, 185 million here. So I think now with uh, a total of four power cells and this energy cell, um, I've got all the power I could need to uh, set up an empowerer, which is good because not only are we going to need that for the digital miner, 
but we are also going to need that to break into Ender IO. Um, so that's the change in plans. Not going to make it to the digital miner today, but I'm going to take a crack at uh, making and setting up the empowerer. We'll see if we can get that done this episode. Okay, and we are back and we have made an empowerer and the four displaced hands necessary. Um, turns out light can come up through these bad boys, so I'm putting sea lanterns under them just to uh, help light the floor up a bit. Got a few of these uh, cave illuminator things going here. I don't like ones at eye level, so I am going to axe that bad boy by putting a block over it. Alright, so this is like uh, we got an empower in the center and then two spaces in each cardinal direction. We've got a displaced hand. The recipe we're trying to make is a um, ultimate control circuit, which is four atomic alloys go in the four displaced hands and an elite control unit goes, or elite control circuit goes in the center. Uh, we need to power the four display stands, so I'm going to need to pull together all of my stuff. So I'm going to go around my plant and yank up all of my uh, all of my power storage things, so that we can temporarily slap them next to the power display stands and try and get this thing made. So I will be right back when I have everything set up. All right, so I'm plopping down my energy cell here. Um, the interface for this, I'm uh, looking at the front, so I want to take the left output, and boom, we are powering up that display stand. Um, for the power cells, put one there. I'm just going to go to set all to out. Um, yeah, so I'll have to go in and change my uh, one hooked up to my induction matrix to um, set it to output power from the induction matrix. Once I get all these set up. I had take to, taken a look at um, the uh, only sort of thing like this, uh, only sort of wireless power I'd used before was I dabbled briefly in um, flux networks, but it turns out that that takes crap that we do not have yet and will not have for a while. Um, so we can't make those plugs, those flux plugs and etc. So if I set this to out, set this to out, and then I need to go upstairs and on our induction matrix where we've been collecting power, I need to switch this bad boy to... Um, all right, so I need to remember how to do this. There's a tool that I need to use. I can just go all in. Is that going to work? Do I need to fiddle out with this? Let's see. It's got 117 million. I haven't tried to take power out of this thing yet. All right, let me pause a moment. I am not sucking power out, so I'll need to figure out how to get power out of my um, induction matrix, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my uh, mechanism configurator out of my um, backpack, and uh, it is in, whoa, it is in um, configurate energy, and shift right click 
toggles between um, input and output. So I think I'm going to toggle this one to output and then just move that bad boy over to the other side. And we should be in business. Alright, okay, so we're sucking a lot of juice out now, so that's good. And probably not wearing boots anymore, slime boots anymore, so I probably shouldn't be jumping down things as much. And so that means that these have got power, which means that all the display stands have power. And we should be good to go. Now I just got to make sure that I have all the junk that we need. So we are making... Um, mechanism uh, digital miner all right digital miner and we need this guy so I need four of those and one of those do I have those made already um, I got four of those so that's good so I need to make one of these which is four blues and an orange Orange and one blue, so I need three more of the blues. It never ends, does it? Which is diamond fuel enriching into the red guys. So my infuser I'm going to be infusing. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and infuse a few extra. So that's going to be, let's see, I put in two of these, that's 16, so we will go, I think each of these takes 10, yes. All right, so we will have a few spare of those for next time, and now we can craft that. Alrighty, so I think we're good to go. Let's see, we need four of those into the display stand, and then one elite controls. Oops, that's well, the same recipe. Four and then one. So let's go try this out. This will be my second time ever using a empowerer. Fairly exciting. And then I'm going to put the final bad boy in the middle. Whoa, and it's going. How are we doing on power? We got all the power we need here. And here. I think we got plenty of power. This is working out well. We just got to wait for it to finish. This takes a couple million, and I'm not sure how far. Oh, there it goes. Yay. I right clicked and picked it up and boom we're in business so I am going to uh, take a look at my runtime make sure uh, I think I might want to try and make while I've got this set up I might want to try and uh, open the next gate if I have the stuff for Ender IO the hard part being this bad boy, which I need to do on there. So 
So yeah, I am going to uh, double check to see if I've got the stuff to make the uh, unlock uh, Ender I.O. while I've got this set up. And if I don't, I'm going to return all my power stuff back to uh, filling up my battery. And uh, I will be right back. Alright, so I took a look at the components needed for the uh, digital miner for mechanism and also for the um, Ender I.O. gate, um, which I knew I was going to need um, to do this through the Empower. And the bottom line is I do not have enough Osmium on hand to do either of these. So I went ahead and uh, dismantled my power sources from the display stands and put them back to input mode. So we're collecting power and collecting power and collecting power up at the wind generators. And the one important safety tip that I saw was, so I ran up here, slapped this in here, moved it to the output. I had all the other ones set to input, and I'm like, great, we're ready. And then this was not getting power. And I was like, uh, what's going on? Nothing is happening. Um, and then I realized that I had a spare guy, and I still had it set here to input. So <laughs> while taking this supposedly... Uh, putting stuff into the network. That one was taking it out of the network. And the net effect of having two linked power cells on here was nothing was moving anywhere. Uh, so that confused me for a moment, but I got all that straightened out and we're back in business and good to go. So um, between this episode and next, I'm going to uh, go and get more Osmium and make up the components and actually finish the digital miner. And we can play with that next episode. Um, I, we did um, get a bunch of stuff finished off here. We uh, we finished uh, in actually additions. We got credit for the empower and greenhouse glass, which was actually just a uh, um, something that we already had on hand from a loot chest. Uh, we also got credit for. Um, We also got credit for, what else did I get credit for? Oh, Mechanism got credit for the Ultimate Control Circuit. So let's open those uh, loot boxes real quick, see if we get anything fun and interesting. Ice, that is not fun or interesting. A charged quartz fixture. Uh, I think I may need some of those for making more... Um, more tubes and pipes and cables and what have you for applied energistics. So, yeah, okay, I'll take those. Um, and then... Benevolent Goddess's Charm. Oh my. Well. Now you've got me curious. Uh, Batania, so... Let's take a look at that real quick. That sounds potentially interesting, so I will pull out my Akashic Dome. I will click left click into space to turn it back to its tome form. I will get out Batania. Open that bad boy up. I will try to find uh Bobbles, there we go. Benevolent Goddess's Charm is a defensive bobble that can, as the name, be worn in charm slot uh, at the cost of some mana. Any explosions in the wearer's vicinity will cease to damage any blocks in the world. Eh, that's sort of cool. No explosions. Alrighty. Well, that might help us with a Batania. I don't think I'll probably wear that. Don't get blown up that much, honest, really. Um, but that will give us a free upgrade when we uh, get there. So at some point we're going to push back into the magic stuff. Um, not quite yet, but at some point. All right, so that's about it for today. Um, 
as I said, I'm going to go get some more Osmium, and then we'll finish the Digital Miner and play with that next episode, hopefully, unless some other world block arises. And, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, the reason I'm not going to wear that is I really like these cyclic um, ones. I guess this fire charm is probably dead because it's out of durability, so I could probably take that off. But these fire charms uh, are really useful against the ice and fire dragons. Uh, wing, air, void. The antidote charm turned out to be really handy against cockatrice or cave spiders. So, um... I sort of like those. So I'm sort of all full up with bobbles at the moment until I uh, find something else I might need. Alright, so anyway, uh, we will throw that in the basket here and we will talk again next time. Bye.